Well, I wanted to invite you to take the Word of God with me this evening, and we'll open to the book of 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians in chapter number 13. All right, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, we're going to start with verse number 1 when we get there. I'm so excited to open the Word of God together with you this evening and see what God has for us. It's certainly a familiar portion of Scripture, and God gives us a lot of principles of value and truth for our lives in this context, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's, it's, it's a topic that I really enjoy talking about and uh, really enjoy looking at from the Word of God because I think it's so powerful and helpful for each of our lives. Um, because all of us as God's children, we really want to make an impact in our world, right? We don't want to just coast through life and just get to heaven and go, well, I'm glad that was over, you know? We want to make an impact in this world. We want to make an impact in our homes, in our community, in the ministry, in our church family. Uh, we want to make an impact and really touch lives and, and feel like we've left an imprint for God upon this life when we get the ch time to leave it. And so often I feel like there's so many barriers and so many difficulties to that impact that we would like to make. And as we try to try to help people and try to be a blessing and try to connect with people and try to share the gospel and try to minister to souls wherever we go, uh, sometimes we'll, we'll bump up against barriers and boundaries and, and struggles when we're really just trying to help and connect with people and trying to make a difference for the Lord in this world. And the truth is that what we find from the Word of God is that the power of love given by God is really incredible. How it can change lives, how it can impact people, how it can open doors and break down barriers and boundaries. And so that's what we're going to find tonight as we look at love. I, I know I gave you a bit of a heads up a couple of weeks ago. I said I might be talking about love sometime soon. If you heard that and you're waiting for it, this is it. If you heard that and you're thinking, oh no, not again. I'm sorry, it's tonight. You're in for it. But we're going to talk about love tonight. You might have guessed that if you're familiar with 1 Corinthians 13. And it's really hard to overstate the importance of love, isn't it, from a Christian perspective? Because as we look at the scriptures, what did Jesus tell us? The most important commandment is love. And the second most important commandment, also love, <laughs> right? Love is so integral to everything we need to do as a Christian. Love needs to be at the center of all of it. And I'm thankful that at North Country Baptist Church, I, I sense and experience so much of God's love flowing through the people in this church family, and I appreciate that and value that. So I'm not preaching this sermon, of course, as a, as a, you're a bunch of unloving people you need to straighten up. No, but as we are people who want to love, and we want to love better, don't we? And that's what our church family is. We're a group of people who love the Lord and want to learn to love Him better, and love each other and want to learn to love each other better. And so that's what we're going to try to talk about a little bit this evening as we talk about love. Now, I, there's a, a poem that uh, sort of a very, very uh, kindergarten sort of poem, and I don't even remember where I first heard it, but uh, I, uh, when John was, was uh, growing up a little bit, I haven't used it with him a long time, but I was trying to teach him the poem, and it starts out, hearts like doors oft open with ease <laughs> to very, very little keys. And don't forget the two of these are, thank you, sir, and if you please. <laughs> See, he still remembers it. Uh, and it's very helpful at, you know, young ages when kids are first starting to learn their pleases and thank yous. But, but what I thought from that tonight is that hearts, like doors, oft open with ease. But we need the right keys to do that. And so as we look at our text this evening, we'll remember the title of the message is that love is the key. Love is the key. So let's look at the text together tonight. It says in 1 Corinthians 13 and 1, Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Fathers, we open your word tonight. We uh, want to see what you have to say about love, because all that we know and understand about love pales in comparison to what you can teach us as your spirit works through your word tonight. I pray that you would hide me behind the cross and that all that we see tonight would be you and your greatness. And that as we learn from you and your word tonight, that it would, it would take root in our hearts in a way that would be practical, that would be applicable, and that would be transformative for the days ahead. Use us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 
All right, I like talking about love. It's one of my favorite Bible themes. I love talking about God's love because it completely blows my mind every time I think about how much God loves me. Because I know me. I wouldn't love me that much, <laughs> but God does. And yet, as we understand the depth and magnitude of the enormous love that God extends, boy, it's such a rich study to see that we can also extend a powerful love like God extends to the people in our lives. The problem is that sometimes it's challenging. <laughs> And sometimes, as I said, there's barriers and obstacles. The first thing we're going to notice tonight is that there are locks. <laughs> sometimes there are locks and blocks in our way that, that are obstacles to connecting with people. Because that's what love is, really. It's a way in which we can connect with people on a level that transcends the, the natural and the physical, but because we can connect with each other beyond what you can see and touch. Love isn't something that you can just handle with your hands or taste with your tongue. Love is something that, tr that is beyond what's physical. And truly, is the love that we see in Scripture is something that's spiritual and supernatural. And despite the best efforts and labors that we can produce in life and in ministry, uh, sometimes we're going to just hit obstacles. And sometimes it's going to be hard. Sometimes it's going to be difficult. I love the context of these first three verses in particular because he's, he's talking about all these efforts and all these things that we can do and all these things that we can know and all these achievements we can attain. And he says, basically, without love, what's the point? <laughs> what's the point? Because you're just going to bump up against obstacles if the love isn't there to open those doors and create opportunity. He says, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I become as a sounding brass or tinkling cymbal. He says, if we were to have all this speaking ability, the tongues of men and of angels, what's the point without love, <laughs> right? If we were fantastic in our communication skills, if we took all the lessons and classes on how to preach or how to teach or how to communicate and how to dialogue with the people in our lives, uh, I like learning about communication and I'm trying to learn. I'm constantly trying to learn to be a better communicator, not just in the pulpit, but when I'm talking with people and in the home and in the community. We can take all the communication classes in the world, but if we don't love people, what's the point? <laughs> We're not going to ever reach anybody. We're not going to make connections with people. We're not going to build relationships of strength and solidity. It's going to be a waste of our efforts if there's not love in the mix. What about verse 2? Though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, if I have everything on the inside, <laughs> faith and knowledge and foresight and, and all of these abilities, understand all mysteries, you know, I could be so intelligent. I could have the brain of a rocket scientist. I could have all the intellect to be the smartest person on the planet. Pastor was talking about a genius that he knows this morning, right? If, you could be the, the world's greatest genius, but if you don't love... It's all for nothing, right? He says, if I have all these things and I don't have love, I am nothing. <laughs> What's the point? Be an educated idiot, right? There's no sense in, in being brilliant if that brilliance isn't channeled through love to help people, right? What's the point? You're going to bounce up against those boundaries. How about verse 3? Though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned... He says, I could make the utmost of generosity, the greatest of sacrifice. I could be the greatest philanthropist the world has ever seen. I could give away everything, even giving my own body to death and to burning. But if it's not love, who am I helping, <laughs> right? You can give and give and give until you're blue in the face. But love breaks through boundaries and barriers. And so there's all these obstacles that can come up. And I, I wish that I had a lot more time tonight that we could, we could make a lot of different applications of where we're going to talk about love. But love is an essential thing because there are barriers. And certainly within the context of ministry, we're trying to connect with people. We're trying to preach the gospel. We're trying to minister to hearts and souls. And connecting with people, that's about that speaking with tongues or, or gift of prophecies or understanding mysteries. You know what? I could be the greatest communicator and I could be the greatest interpreter of Scripture. I could understand all the intricacies. I could explain everything to everybody in just a way that everybody would understand. I could give you everything. But if there's no love, how is the power of God flowing through that? How is it going to break down barriers to people who really need help? And when, when I look at ministry, you know, I look at the spiritual gifts that the Bible talks about, and, and my spiritual gifting, from what I can tell, is the gift of ministry, and that is the desire to serve the needs of others. I love serving the needs of others, helping out, 
you know, fixing problems, uh, bringing solutions, connecting people. I love that. But how can I do that if there's no love to connect people with? So in ministry, there's barriers. Uh, in the home, there's barriers, whether it's in your marriage or in your parenting or in your relationship with your parents or with your siblings. Sometimes there's conflict. Sometimes there's strife. Sometimes there's miscommunications and misunderstandings. Um, sometimes there's barriers and boundaries in those relationships that are the nearest and dearest to us where it's really, I mean, if there's anybody on earth you want to have a good relationship with, it's the people in your own family, right? But sometimes there's barriers and boundaries there that because of our sinful nature and because of the weakness of our understanding of each other, sometimes there's barriers there. Uh, sometimes there's barriers and boundaries when we interact with people in the community, whether it's at work, whether it's at school, whether it's our neighbors. Probably none of you have ever had a bad neighbor. I, we'll skip that point. Um, <laughs> sometimes the people that we interact with, sometimes there's barriers. And we want to connect with people. We want to help people. But sometimes there's blockages there. Sometimes there's, there's walls that people put up. I mean, sometimes it's a physical wall, but sometimes it's an emotional wall. Sometimes it's an intellectual wall. Sometimes it's a social wall. And those barriers can block so much of what we love to do to connect with people. Sometimes people say life would be easy if it wasn't for all the people, right? <laughs> but the truth is, as much as sometimes people are our greatest struggle trying to interact with people, they're also the greatest human joys that we can have when love is present and when things are working the way God intended them to. And so I wanted to see that there are barriers and to, to bring our attention to that because all of us in our minds can be going, oh yeah, I know where there's some barriers in my life or in my home or in my workplace or in my neighborhood. I know where there's barriers. We know that. Maybe there's somebody you're trying to give the gospel to and they just don't want to talk about it, you know? Maybe it's somebody that you're trying to connect with in your home that there's been some strife and conflict. Maybe it's somebody in the workplace or at school or in your neighborhood and you, you want to, you, you feel like there's just this, ugh, something's blocking, right? And those locks can be opened. They really can through God's grace. So the second thing we're going to talk about is probably the most obvious point of the message and that is love. Love. Because love is the key that can really transform our relationships and take things to a level where we're able to connect, we're able to communicate better, we're able to help each other better, we're able to serve the Lord more effectively. And the love that we're talking about here in Scripture, this is not just your natural, normal human love. Because what we find here is the love that God's talking about here is that agape love, that's the Greek word, agape love, that is, is beyond what we would normally just experience in day-to-day -day relationships. This is a love that comes from the Lord. This is God's love flowing through his children. And I love it that in our King James Bible, it doesn't use the word love in this chapter, which might confuse us at first to think, man, I thought this was the love chapter of the Bible. The word love doesn't show up here at all. But our King James Bible, when it was translated in the 1600s, they used the word charity here because they were trying to communicate a, a love that was beyond what we would maybe immediately anticipate with the title love. Because love can be used a lot of different ways in our language, right? You know, I love my wife and I also love ice cream. It's not the same, right? There are different types of love, right? And so the word that's used here, charity, helps us understand that the type of love it's talking about here is a self-sacrificing love that expects nothing in return, right? Because when we use the word charity, we think of giving something to somebody from whom we expect nothing back, right? That's how we use the word charity. And in, in an old style of talking, we would use that phrase Christian charity, meaning we have that love of God that flows through us so we can impact people in a way that's really going to make a difference, right? So this is not just a natural love. This isn't the sort of thing you can just, you know, Pastor Gibbish, am I supposed to just love people more? I'm just going to, you know, grip my teeth and hold my breath until it comes out of me. It doesn't work like that. It's not something you work up. It's not something you try to produce on your own. I'm going to be more loving. Therefore, I'm going to get up in the morning and I'm going to chant, be loving, be loving, be loving, be loving, five times, you know, to try and you know, psych myself into being loving. No, that's not where it comes from. Where does love come from? This scriptural God-like love. Well, it comes from our Heavenly Father. It's the fruit of the Spirit, right? Galatians chapter 5. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, and temperance. But the first one on the list there is love. So if we're going to have this charity, this Christian charity, this God-like love for the people in our lives, in our homes, in our community, it can only come from one source. It doesn't come from sitting around and meditating on how lovely they are. <laughs> because sometimes, let's be honest, some people are a little harder to love than others. Right? I mean, you probably don't know any of those people, but I've met a couple. <laughs> a couple people that are harder to love than others, right? 
It's not from focusing on how nice they are and how good they are and how thankful I should be that they're so good to me. Because quite frankly, some people just aren't that good to me. And it would be much harder to love them if I came from that approach. But where it comes from is understanding that God is love, that God loves them more than I'll understand, and that through his enabling, I can love beyond my ability. And that's what I love about being a Christian, because the Christian life, if you were to take everything in the Bible and try to do it, you know what that would be? Impossible. (laughs) Because I can't do all that on my own. And it's a good thing because I'm not meant to. We're meant to live in God's enabling and God's power flowing through us enables us to do what we could never do on our own. And so what we can do if we're going to embrace the love of Christ for the people in our lives in our community, it has to be through the Lord's love flowing through us. It flows through us as we yield ourselves to the Spirit of God. And so what we can do is, even just before I got up to this pulpit to preach this evening, uh, in my heart as we were going through the preparatory parts of the service and other parts of it, my heart, I was saying, Lord, I surrender myself to you. Please fill me with your spirit so that your love can flow through this message, not just me trying to produce love and be you know, convincing somehow that uh, you know, I, if I put on a good enough act, everybody will feel loved. No, that's not what it's about. It's about, Lord, I submit myself to your spirit to fill me and use me beyond what I can do, right? And that's where the love of God comes from. I wanted to give you a couple other verses that help us with this, and that's in 1 John 4, 19 and 21. It says, we love him, why? Because he first loved us. And this commandment have we from him that he who loveth God loveth his brother also. And so we see this strong connection here of where the love comes from. Where does our love for him come from? Well, it's because he loved us first. And then... Those who love God, we then are able to give that love to each other because his love flows through my life into the lives of those I'm connecting with. And so it's really powerful for us to understand that we acquire this supernatural love through surrender to him and yieldedness to God's spirit. The truth is, I can't love everybody like I ought to on my own. Uh, Sometimes people are irritating. Sometimes people are difficult. Sometimes people are just mean right? But we are called of God to love. What does it say in the scripture? Over and over again, we're commanded to love, right? I think it's 1 Peter chapter 2 where it says, love the brotherhood, okay? So we're to love each other as Christians. Well, that should be pretty straightforward. We would think that we should love each other as Christians, right? That should be obvious. Uh, In Ephesians chapter 5, it says, husbands, love your wives. In Titus chapter 2, it says, wives, love your husbands, love your children. Um, But then when you start getting into it further and further and further, uh, it says, love all men, right? We're supposed to love everybody. In Matthew chapter 5, it says, love your enemies, right? You probably don't have any of those, do you? No? Okay. Um, If you do end up getting an enemy at some point, even them, we are told to love them with the love that only God can give. Now, you understand that doesn't come naturally. It doesn't just flow out of my enthusiasm of, these people are really rotten and mean to me. They're trying to ruin my life. I'm going to just learn to love them, right? That doesn't flow naturally from my heart. But, As a part of our spiritual DNA, as children of God, God can work that into our lives as we learn to love everyone in our life, to let God work through us and do what we cannot do. The love that God gives can transform lives. It can impact people in a way that you and I cannot. Now, I wanted to get into this text a little bit more here and see some of what love looks like, right? Because we can talk about love, but I wanted to put some language around this to see what love looks like as we try to interact with what God's word teaches us, right? So the third point is this, looks. (laughs) How, How love looks? What does it look like? Because what love looks like is sometimes different from what people expect and understand. Because love's not just about a feeling, right? You might not always have warm and fuzzies when you're actually exercising love, right? It's not always just about that. And I like it when I can feel good about loving. But sometimes loving is, Lord, you're going to have to help me on this one. <laughs> Lord, you're going to have to help me love this person your love, with your love because I don't feel really good about it. Uh, there's one preacher that I like to listen to, and he says, love is not um, feeling right about someone. <laughs> he says, love is choosing to treat somebody right. <laughs> and that love is a choice and response. Because if God commands us to love, it can't be a feeling or an accident, right? You can't command somebody to feel something. But God can command us to choose to act in love, to choose to embrace love, to choose to live in love. So it's not about a feeling. 
It's about the way that we live and the way that we treat each other and the way that we behave around each other. So I wanted to look at some of the context here to see some of these things that God gives us that are characteristics of what it looks like when we're living in love. Because I wanted to sort of put some, some you know, tangible thoughts towards this because it's easy to, to, I could preach a whole message on love one another and love is good and love is beautiful and love is important and we would all go, yes, amen, love is good, let's have some. And then we could all go home going, okay, now what, <laughs> right? How do I live that out? And so I wanted to see what God's word gives us here about what love looks like. What's the, what's the clothes that it wears? What's the actions it takes? What does love look like? Because I think these are intensely practical things, right? Let's look at our text here. Verse four, charity suffereth long. Charity suffereth long. Charity's awfully patient. I don't know about you, but Sometimes people have to be patient with me. <laughs> Thanks for not amening that to anybody. But patience is a part of love. It's about showing love to the people in our lives. It's being patient with them. You know what? Man, if, if I gave as much patience as I need, <laughs> I would be very, very patient with people in my life. And that's the love of God. Boy, isn't he patient with me and with you? God is so patient with us. He suffers long with our uh, stubbornness and our foolishness and our rebellions patience. Love is patient. It, it suffers long. It waits long. It endures long. Uh, charity is kind. It's kind. It's looking for ways to have a positive imp impact on people. It's speaking those kind words. It's, it's laboring to sh communicate warmth and kindness and generosity and, and uh, beauty. Um, charity vaunteth not itself. It envieth not. It's not puffed up. It does not behave itself unseemly. I, I want to sort of try to put some language into all this. I'm not going to go through them one by one, but, but patience is key. Sacrifice is key, right? It's about giving. This is a love that gives. It's about saying, my priorities, I'm willing to set aside for now because I want to value you. I want to put you first. And that's a beautiful thing when you can start saying, I'll choose you over me, right? And uh, I love the Reformers Unanimous program because they teach, and I, I thought this was fantastic when I first got it from that ministry, um, that the opposite of love is selfishness, <laughs> right? And when I am sacrificing and giving for others and caring for others first, that's an expression of scriptural love because that's the love that Christ showed for us when he put our needs ahead of his own comfort. He could have stayed in heaven. He didn't have to come and give himself for us. And he didn't have to even walk amongst us and live this, this human experience of pain and suffering and difficulty, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. He didn't have to go through all that, but he chose to walk among us to communicate that love, to show that love by walking in our midst and living through the struggles and heartaches of human existence, yet without sin. And so it's that, that sacrifice of putting others ahead of yourself, whether that's in your, your ministry roles of looking to say, I'm here to be a blessing. And I'm sure people will be a blessing to me, but my goal is to be a blessing, to be a help, and not to just come in and go, I hope everybody appreciates me and notices what I'm doing, you know, but to, to sacrifice, to put ourselves out there, to, to labor and to invest and to put our hearts and our lives into touching people. Sometimes it's sacrifice. Sometimes it might be a small sacrifice. Sometimes it might be a big sacrifice, but it's about giving of ourselves with no expectation of return. Also, it's about humility. I love in verse 4, it says that uh, charity vaunteth not itself is not puffed up. It's about letting others be the bigger person, letting others get the attention. It's not about puffing myself up and hoping everybody notices. Because one of the funniest things is sometimes you can do something and you can do something really nice for somebody and you're thinking, okay, love is about sacrifice. I'll do this sacrifice. And then I'll make sure they notice how great I am for loving them so much, <laughs> right? It's not about that. Love isn't trying to get all the attention. Love isn't trying to get all the focus upon myself, but it's rather seeking to let the other person enjoy the sacrifice that I've given and to let them just savor the good things that God has allowed me to sow into their lives. It's not about drawing attention to me. It's about drawing attention to others, to point out their joy, to seek their happiness, to share in their joys, to share in their sorrows, to value them over myself. It's about listening. And I know I preached a message a couple of weeks ago about listening, and so I won't go into a, as much depth with a, that theme as I did then, but listening to people and hearing their hearts and giving time for them to speak their uh, experiences and their life story and to give them time to, to express themselves. Uh, that's an expression of love, right? To be willing to receive and to listen and to care. Certainly God loves us enough to listen to us. 
He gives us his ear whenever we need it, <laughs> right? He is always available to listen to our hearts, concerns, our cares, our needs. When I need to talk about anything, God's willing to listen. Even when somebody else who is listening might think it was pretty stupid. <laughs> my father loves me and he wants to hear my heart. And love is, an exp- is expressed sometimes by listening. It's expressed by enduring. It endures. In the end of verse, six, uh, verse 7, it endures all things. Love never quits. It never takes a day off. In Song of Solomon, it says, many waters cannot quench love. It doesn't quit. It endures. It stands the test of time. Love doesn't take a day off. It doesn't take a holiday. It doesn't call it quits at any point. Love continues. If there's somebody that, that, that we're going to love with the love of Christ, they could do something unexpected, something that we don't appreciate, something that maybe hurt us, and the next time we see them, we can say, Lord, help me to continue to love them with your love. Help me to continue to sow love into their lives. Because the truth is, people are going to disappoint us. People are going to um, break our hearts sometimes. But the love of Christ thro- flowing through our lives can, can still embrace those people after they've broken our hearts or after they've hurt us or even if they've after, after they've inconvenienced us. It endures. It's about kindness. Love is about acceptance. Sometimes people will come into our lives and they'll tell us the most shocking things and do the most shocking things. And though we don't necessarily value and accept what they've done or the ways they've behaved, I think it's so powerful for us, like God's love towards us, is to still be open to the relationship, to communicate with them, to love them and to show them that love, to accept them. That uh, even when we don't agree with them, we can accept them and love them, right? Because there's a lot of people we're not going to agree with. A lot of people we're not going to agree with the, the things they do, the things they believe, the ways they live their life. But to be a person who's, who's got the love of God means that we're going to embrace people no matter where they are and what, they're com- what they've come from and what they're going through, that we're going to love people right where they are. Because we can see that through the pages of Scripture, don't we? <laughs> when Jesus walked this earth, everybody he met... It didn't matter what their history was. It didn't matter where they're coming from. If they wanted to know him, he would take the time. And people criticized him. Why are you hanging out with those, those people? They're evil. They're wicked. He says, yeah, but they want to know me. And he was willing to embrace all kinds of people, people from different cultures, different backgrounds, different experiences. He was willing to love everybody. And you may say, yeah, but he was, he was pretty nasty to those Pharisees. I'll grant you this. He preached pretty hard against the hypocrisy of the Pharisees and the doctrines of the Pharisees. But he loved them just as much as he loved everybody else because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? His love is unsearchable to all men. God loves everybody. And his love is for everybody. No matter where they are and what stage of life they're in, God's love is rich towards them. And sometimes we can get so shocked by people's appearance or their behavior or their uh, vocabulary or their lifestyles that we might just like, uh, it might grate on us. And sin should grate on us to some degree. But yet the love of Christ flowing through us says, look, God loves you. I love you. Let me get to know you. Let's, let's connect because we want to help them. Not that we're necessarily going to jump on people's problems and, and, and attack those issues, but that we can love them to a place where they're ready to hear, right? If we show the love of Christ, that love can open doors in people's hearts, right? We can connect with people when we take that uh, expression of acceptance to show them that they are loved and appreciated. Expressions of value, appreciating people, right? Showing them the concern and value that you notice that they've done well, that they're uh, doing well, that they're trying, even if they're failing. I can see you're trying hard at this, (laughs) you know? Expressing appreciation to people, it's so good. God expresses love to us all the time, right? You search the pages of scriptures. How many times does God tell us about his incredible love for us? And so those expressions of love and appreciation and value to people, it really helps open doors to people. If you can, if you can communicate how important people are, not that we're not trying to puff people's pride up, but we do want to let them know they're valued and appreciated and loved. That's so rich. Boy, if somebody comes along and says, you know what? You did a good job with that. Man, we all like that, right? <laughs> we all love that. It's one of those things Jesus said that we should treat other people the way that we would like to be treated. We all love it when somebody says, you're doing a good job. I appreciate you. And, you know, thanks for trying. Thanks for showing up. Thanks for being there. Thanks for doing the good things to express those appreciations and those expressions of value. <clears throat> Another thing that love does is it seeks to, 
<clears throat> build connections and communication, right? Love will invite, invite feedback and, and receive it, right? When we love people, <clears throat> we're willing to let them speak into our lives as well. One of the things that I thought was really, really interesting was that uh, the Lord brought us here to North Country Baptist Church again uh, last summer. And just a couple weeks after we started here, I preached a message and uh, was really excited with how the message went. And I thought, man, I'm really happy with how that went. And then after the message, uh, one of our church members came to me and said, Pastor Gibbish, can I talk to you for a second? And gave me some feedback on the message. And I really appreciate that because that's somebody who cares and wants to connect. And I tried to listen and, and receive that feedback because that's valuable to me. Because you know what? I can't hear me the way you hear me, right? And so I appreciated that. But love says, I'm willing to let you speak into my life without getting defensive or offended or angry or, you know, it's, it's letting people communicate with you and embracing that, even if they're wrong. I mean, sometimes we will give you feedback and it's just nonsense, but sometimes it's real and it's helpful and it's beautiful. And it, it connects bonds when people feel like they can connect with you by giving feedback in your life. Love will give people the benefit of the doubt. You do see that in this text here uh, in verse number five. Uh, the end of the verse, it says, thinketh no evil. <laughs> thinketh no evil. I believe that's talking about giving people the benefit of the doubt. It's hard to do sometimes because I think everybody's like me. <laughs> and it turns out not everybody's like me. Not everybody thinks the way I think. Not everybody, not everybody reacts to things the way I would react to things. And so if somebody reacts to something differently than I would react to something, I think, man, I think I'm pretty sure I know why they did that or why they did you know. But giving people the benefit of the doubt, giving people time, I'm not just going to immediately assume. I heard this, this word. I thought it was pretty good re recently. Um, it, it's a phrase that I heard recently, and it was, sometimes people will commit a suicide. <laughs> it's a fatal error. <laughs> you know, you could create a lot of harm when you commit a suicide. I thought that was pretty funny. But it's, it's giving people the benefit of the doubt and giving people the opportunity to learn and to grow and not just, not just assuming that I understand everything, right? Thinketh no evil. But it's also speaking the truth, too. I know a lot of this sounds positive. And it's like, but what if we have some conflict? Sometimes we have to speak the truth. And I know Ephesians chapter 4 talks about speaking the truth in love. And sometimes, and even here in verse 6, it says, and rejoiceth in the truth. Uh, when we love people, we'll, we'll talk to them about things, and sometimes we'll give them some feedback that's helpful but given in a way that's powerful and loving. And when God gives us that love and we're expressing that love and showing that love and people are experiencing the love of God through us, then we're able much more so to speak that truth into people's lives. Because sometimes, sometimes there's hard things that need to be confronted. Sometimes it's a gospel conversation to tell somebody that they're a sinner and they need salvation before they go to eternity without Christ. That's a hard message to hear, but when it's delivered with love, how much more smoothly that can go. Love. What does it look like? It looks like a lot of things. I, maybe you've heard this before, but uh, sometimes, and very oftentimes, love is not always just spelled L-O-V-E. It's also spelled T-I-M-E, right? <laughs> Taking the time to invest in people. Sometimes it takes a long time of investing in people and showing them the time, showing them the value that they have to the Lord and to you to connect and to communicate with people. And let's do what we can to communicate love in our lives, in the community, in the ministry, that we can live lives that are expressions of the tremendous value that God has placed upon the people in our lives. Sometimes people to us, they're just people and they're just passing in the crowd or they're just going about their life and doing their thing and they've got schedules and we got schedules and my life is busy and your life's busy. But the truth is that every single person you're going to cross paths with and I'm going to cross paths with is somebody that Jesus loved enough to die on the cross for their soul, right? And love is recognizing the value that God has placed upon them and choosing to value them as he does and to embrace them with that value of love that God has for each one. And so that's what it is to love. <clears throat> I wanted to give you one last thing as an illustration, and then we'll close this up. I, I heard about a story. There was a, um, back in the 1800s, there was a man who had written, um, he was a, a very dedicated Christian, he wrote a booklet that was very, very helpful. It was called Come to Jesus. And it was essentially a, an evangelistic booklet. And it was used as gospel literature and they, it had been spread quite widely and a lot of people had gotten saved from reading this little booklet. And it became very well known um, in his area and it was called Come to Jesus. And it was really well used. <clears throat> now, while, while he had become very well known, a lot of people knew who he was. And then a while later, he, he was having a bit of a theological discussion uh, with, with another person, and uh, 
the person who was disagreeing with him actually published, um, published an article stating how wrong he was, <laughs> right? And uh, he was not too happy about it, so he wrote an article and uh, a response, and it was prickly. <laughs> he wrote a very strong article proving why this other guy was a nut job, and he didn't know anything, and this was all nonsense, and, and it, was, it was sharp, it was cutting, and it wasn't too kind. So he, he went to a friend, and he, he said to him, look, I've, I've written this article. Boy, I'm going to get this guy. You know, he's really going to hear it after this. What do you suggest I title the article? I can't think of a good title for the article. And his friend read the article, and he said, you know what you should call the article? You should call it, Go to the Devil, by the author of Come to Jesus. <laughs> he thought about it for a minute and decided to throw the article out. <laughs> right. We can do so much harm with the way that we interact with people, or by love, we can invite people to Jesus, not just for salvation, but also to know him better through our relationship with him and showing the love of Christ, right? And I want to be one of those who is, is used of the Spirit of God to, to express the love of Christ to people in such a way that when they're interacting with my life, that I know I'm not good at it sometimes, but that's my goal is that I'm trying to get better at yielding to the Spirit of God, letting the love of God flow through me so that I can, I can show the love of God to people in such a way that their lives will really be impacted and they'll be more willing to be ready to hear about Christ, to hear about the Word of God, to hear the truths of the Word of God, and to be helped on their spiritual journey to the Lord. And as we learn to love people, take time, talk to people, connect with people, listen to people, put their values ahead of your priorities and preferences, but, but let people see how much you care, right? And I hate to do this. I, I don't like those cliches very much, but it's still true, and it will always be true that people don't care how much you know so they know how much you care, right? It's so, so true. And as we learn to show people the love of Christ more and more and more, that is a key that will open their doors, open their hearts, open their lives to the truth of the gospel. There's so many times where people have been so hard against the truth, so hard against the gospel, so hard against the people in their home or in their community or, or in a church, so hardened by all the, all the stuff that they've been through. And some people have really been through it, and they've got hard, hard. They've put up all kinds of barriers, all kinds of locks, all kinds of doors. But the love of Christ can pierce through that, right? <laughs> the light of the love of Christ can shine through the keyholes enough that they start to wonder what's going on and think, man, somebody loves me. <laughs> what's going on here? I want to know about this. And, and we're not saying that we should just love people and not tell them, right? Because it's speaking the truth in love. The love and the truth come together, and they have to be spoken. But as we mix that together, mix the love with the truth, put it together in speaking, we can really see lives changed. We can see people helped within the church and outside these walls. And I, my prayer is that God would really give us a greater love, and that our love would increase and abound, as it did with the New Testament believers, more and more. Let's pray and ask God to help us with that. Lord, we know that your love is so rich and powerful and that what it has done in our lives, so often your goodness has brought us to a place of change. Your love has brought us to a place of repentance and awareness and insight. Lord, I pray that your love would flow through us freely. Lord, that we would stop being such a barrier to all that you want to do by our own agendas and our own schedules and our own selfishness and our own priorities. But Lord, that we would choose to embrace your purpose and calling, that we would choose to embrace the people that cross our paths and show them the genuine love of Christ, communicating with them, embracing them, accepting them, being kind to them, valuing them, showing them and speaking to them of your love. Lord, may your spirit make some application to each of our hearts tonight, Lord, where we could grow in this in our homes, in our church family, in our community, in our workplace, wherever we go this week, that your love would really grip people's attention and that people would stop noticing us and our behavior, but that through our lives, they would see you. Help us, Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.